Welcome to the Al Arbor Rink here at the Northwell Health Ice Center on Long Island, New York. You're watching live on the LI Sports Network where we have an Empire Conference matchup here in AAU College Hockey Division I. The visiting Fairfield University Stags taking on the Farmingdale State College Rams. Puck dropper underway here in the opening frame. Alongside Luke Judge, my name is Jordan DeLuciano. We'll be on the call for tonight's action as both these teams, as we get a quick offsides there, both these teams in desperation mode for wins. We'll start off with Fairfield. 
0-5 on the year. Three of their five games were one goal losses. 4-3 to Niagara, 5-4 to St. Bonaventure, and 5-4 to Formingdale. We'll talk a little bit about their recent matchup two weeks ago. And you have Farmingdale on the other end, 4-3-1 and one on the year. One of those four wins being against Fairfield, that 5-4 game two weeks ago. Turnover by Farmingdale, and it's gloved away by tonight's starting goaltender, Jake Tempkin. Farmingdale, 4-3-1 on the year. They're second place in the Empire Conference in AAU Division I. In their last four games, they are 1-2-1. One, one. That one at the end is a tie against Georgia. But in their last five games, they have allowed three or more goals in all of those five games. Farmdale averaging three and a half goals a game, letting up 3.25 against. And their goal differential has shrunk. It's only at a plus two right now after this recent slide. That you know, Fairfield needs a win there, 0 5. Farmingdale desperately looking to get back in the win column after a tie against Georgia and a loss in one of the worst showings of the season for Farmingdale. They were shut out 4 nothing against the Bulldogs, taking seven penalties and only having 12 shots. As Duffy throws his second decisive hit of the shift. Farmingdale from starting puck drop to the final one as that was tricky for Temkin. Starting puck drop to the final buzzer. The Rams looked lethargic, to say the least, against Georgia. Power play was not good. The passing was not good. Defensive zone was a disaster and just not a good game. The only one that really showed up for Farmingdale in their most recent game, that 4-0 loss to Georgia, was goaltender Joseph DeCanio. But now the other way, it's Brazel throwing it on net, getting his own rebound, punching free another chance. It's blocked down in front by Immel. So a good look for the first year player out of Hingham, Massachusetts, Aiden Brazel, who currently three goals, one assist, four points in the five games this year at the top of the stat sheet for Fairfield. Nice pass to find Lee right off the bench, knocked down in front, never made it to Temkin. Good push here by the Stags, but it comes to an end with a glove by Temkin. Brazel was the one from behind the net, threw it right up the middle, perfectly timed for Zach Lee. But Lee elected to go back across instead of trying to go for the short side there, and it wound up getting blocked. James Hemkin with that recent cover-up. Temkin coming into this game. 2-0-1 on the year. That one at the end was the tie against Georgia. 2.84 goals against average and a 9-2-5 save percentage on the year. And the last meeting against Fairfield, Temkin got the win. 42 saves in the effort. Farmingdale won that one 5-4, but they did trail 3-1 at one point, as well as being down 4-3 in the third. It was a Tim Duffy shorthanded goal to tie it, and a Dylan Bridgewood game winner late in the final frame as that one slips in. Devin Quinones just as surprised as the rest of us, and it's 1-0. And not how you draw it up, but one to remember, it will be Devin Quinones' first collegiate goal. And it's one of the weird ones. Eric Dillner, one to forget for him in goal as he tried to shovel it away with the stick and the stick was a little too much off the ice there. So Farmingdale, after getting shut out their last game last weekend against Georgia, only mustering 12 shots, gets their first one in on a weird one. Everyone always imagines their first college hockey goal to be a nice one as a big hit is reversed there by Kravitz as Christopher Cummings came in with a head full of steam. 
all college hockey players, or if they make it even further, imagine their first goal being one to remember, you know, a nice shot, two on one, a power play goal, a game winning goal, you know. But for Devin Quinones, it's, it's just one that accidentally went in, but he'll take it. Hawkins on the turnover, got Signoretti with him, and the shot is deflected behind the net off the stick of Chase McKenna. It'll be William Kidd now. The offensive defenseman on the back end for the Stags couldn't get much further than the high slot there as Farmingdale will scoop up off the change. It's Duffy around two red jerseys. One against the world, and he scores! Tim Duffy right off the bench, over the glove, and it's 2-0. There's one, there's two, and there's the world in front of him. And a less than ideal start for er Eric Dillner in net. Two goals on two shots. And Fairfield, what can go wrong will go wrong. An 0-5 start to the year and a 2-0 deficit, not even five minutes into this game. Fairfield averaging only 2.8 goals a game, letting up five on the dot per game, as Dillner has a 4.79 goals against average. Back of goaltender Daniel Schroeder is a big body thrown in the corner lighting up 5.17 in his one appearance this year. Dillner with an 8.84 save percentage and Schroeder with an 8.57. Like I said, Schroeder has only one game played this year. Tim Duffy came into this one with four goals in his last five games. He now picks up his seventh of the year as he was tied in AAU Division I with, in 19th place with six goals, so he'll uh, jump up the leaderboards with that one. Kept in by Will Leary, banks off the boards, Tempkin over on the rebound. Trying to stuff it on the backhand, there's one, two, and covered by the goaltender Temkin. So Fairfield has been pushing a little bit. Couple second and third chances for the Stags, but it's been the two lone shots for Farmingdale so far. One was the weird one that arguably shouldn't have went in, and then the great shot by Duffy that looked like it just caught Dillner off guard as Fairfield being very physical, back-to-back -back shifts in the offensive zone. It'll be Jason Brennan, who had a goal in Farmingdale's 5-4 win against Fairfield two weeks ago. Minio will throw it down the middle as it's broken up. Minio had two assists that game. These two teams have a long history as the all-time record, Farmingdale up significantly, 21 wins, nine losses, one tie. But the most recent one that was arguably one of the most important ones this past year at the AAU National Championships, both teams won their pool and linked up in the quarterfinal winner go home matchup and it went to Fairfield as the Stags won that one four to three on their trip to the AAU National Championship game where Fairfield lost to the University of Binghamton six to three as Kid winds fires, redirected off a of skate. Marquis goes to Kid. they play catch. It's Marquis shooting right into the glove of Temkin. Fairfield, not only were they runner-ups in the AAU National Championships, losing to Binghamton, but they were also runner-ups in the Empire Conference Championship game where they lost to Ramapo in overtime, four to three.
Last year, the Stags were 19-8-2. They were the eighth-ranked team in the AAU. Had two great runs at Nationals and in the Empire Conference playoffs, but both times, unfortunately for them, coming up short. Nice move by Brandon Hughes to get some separation off the near boards. Aiden McDonald all by himself, dancing free, and the shot was disrupted as Quinones stayed with him stride for stride. Kicks out in the slot, kicked away Tipkin, and he has to swipe away at the loose puck. Ethan Bohm will scoop up in the corner. He gets help from DeAndrea. DeAndrea looks to the point and goes there. Kravitz off the wall to the net, deflected over the bar by McCann. Going for the long stretch pass, trying to link up with a man in Luca Mandato, cannot find him. Winds fires off the inside of the leg of McCann as he's gonna wear that one. John McCann coming into this game pointless in his last three games, one point in his last five games. Him in that top line the past three games have been, been struggling to get going after a good start for himself, Matthew Hawkins, and Luciano Signoretti. The past couple of games have been a struggle for that top line, as Signoretti as well, zero goals in that three game span. After such a hot start for the second year player at Farmingdale, but first year with Division I. Uh, Signorini has seven goals, three assists, 10 points in the eight games. Riley McGregor will go on the chase, got a man all over him in Ronan Curry. But McGregor able to go D to D to Kravitz. Signoretti, Hawkins, and cross red into blue. McCann trying to dance around a man. Puck got free, so did McCann. Murray trying to chop it down, he will. Hemmed on the near side boards will be Hawkins walking out. He'll just chop that around the glass for Signoretti behind the net. Signoretti dealing with Ryan Dolan in the corner. Comes the blue line, Rotan, Murray. Murray looks, fires, pops in the air, gloved down by the hand of William Leary. And out come the Stags, they'll just dump it in as the other four go for a change. The lone man still out there is Brennan Cohen. Out of the reach, this might be an icing, and it will be very wisely by William Kidd there to kind of take the long route to that puck. Tim Duffy's been one of the better players for Farmingdale. He's been on quite some run after a slow start to the year. But ever since he got linked up on a line with uh, Sean O'Donnell, who he played junior hockey with, with the PAL Junior Islanders, things have just been clicking. O'Donnell, Duffy, and Michael Larico. That one's deflected over the net, and it comes right around for Chase McKenna. McKenna towards the net, kicked away by Temkin. Murray, friendly fire there, hits Duffy. O'Donnell still chopping at it. Nice move for the blue line. It'll be Malalepsi with a man, but overskated the puck and coughs it up. So a two-on-one look there for Fairfield. But Malawepsi frustratingly now slams his stick on the boards as they had a good chance there. Duffy all by himself, just the way he scored. But this time he'll dump it in, head off on a change. As Farmingdale looks for some fresh legs. Bouncing puck in the favor of Fairfield. It's Sharf's, Sharf's scene trying to go after it. Links up with Jesse Burns behind the net. As the two new faces here at Fairfield. Robert Scharfstein and Aiden Brazel, both leading the team in points and goals as that one's blocked away by Dillner. 
Aiden Brazel, coming out of Hingham, Massachusetts, played for Hingham High School in his senior year, had 15 goals before coming to Fairfield University. And for Sharfstein, last season played with the Holderness School as well as New England Fall Prep Central under 19 team. With that under 19 group, he had six points in 10 games. Bridgewood around the cage. Couldn't find anyone. Comes to the point. Immel covering for McGregor. As Fairfield tries to flip it out, Zach Lee did not get all of that one. Immel on the turnover. Finds Minio. Minio fires one. Block it away. Good read on the shot by Dillner. Aiden Blake around the cage, up the board, trying to go to the point, but the pass was behind Kevin McIntyre. This Fairfield group coming into this year lost three key pieces. Captain on the forward end, Vincent Spaziante. Captain on the back end, Mark Vaughn. And another prominent piece on the front, and Michael Pitacelli. Last year, Spaziante led the team in goals and, po and points. 17 goals, 40 points on the season. Nice move to gain the zone, as that one's rifled wide by Brandon Hughes. Last year for the Stags, they got big contributions from up and down the lineup, and a nice bouncing puck. Fairfield in alone, not able to slow it down was Mandato, trying to wrap it around, but he got tangled up with Rotan. But those contributions from up and down the lineup last year have not marinated into this one. Connor Marmoro, 11 goals, 28 points last year. Brennan Burke, 12 goals, 27 points this year as both those two specifically have been struggling to get out of the gates along with a lot of a, the Stags offense this year. Despite being down 2-0, Fairfield has looked strong in the offensive zone. They've had the better of the chances. It's just a uh, Dillner let in that tough one to Quinones, and then that great shot by Duffy beat him a second time. Farmingdale's most recent game against Georgia was one to just completely forget and act like it never happened. Pass in front, turnaround shot goes wide by Brendan Burke. Farmingdale was very sloppy in the defensive zone. As rebounds came loose, they were letting up odd man rushes, breakaways. There was a time where Farmingdale, in, while they were on the power play, let up three breakaways in one power play. Three shorthanded breakaways. And that totaled out to four altogether in one period. As William Kidd enters the zone, nice drop pass as that one sticked away by Tempkin as Brandon Cullen had a look on goal. Numbers the other way for Farmingdale. McCann, Signoretti, holds, fires, pet save by Dillner. That game against Georgia, it, it was four nothing Georgia. Could have been a lot worse if it was not for Joseph DeCanio in net for the Rams. Like I said, that second period alone, he made four breakaway saves, three of them coming while his team was on the power play. And he also, in the third period, stopped the penalty shot. So he was stopping all the one on O's. As Farmingdale looked like they iced it again, but we play on. Is this Fairfield's first game in two weeks? Last game they had was against Farmingdale, that 5-4 loss when Fairfield was back home in Connecticut. Duffy, corner. Not often do we say this, but Duffy muscled off the puck there. Magina Capra trying to come out from behind, cannot, as he got pickpocketed from behind. But out will come Momro. Momro dips a pass to hit him a McGregor, but good back check by Farmingdale to help out their D-man, as it'll be Kravitz. To Duffy. Duffy will shoot it from anywhere right now after what he got on his 
goal to make it 2 0 as Dillner will cover it up. Four twenty-four left in the opening frame. Two nothing for Farmingdale after a tough start for Dillner and Net. Looks like he's settled in so far as he made a nice save on Farmingdale's three-on-two attempt when McCann found Signoretti in the high slot. Ada McDonald to Blake. Blake couldn't slow it down, and Farmingdale looked to counter the other way. Minio dances, nice move, couldn't pull the trigger. Immel all tangled up right now with Blake. Immel thrown off the puck, but able to get some help by Jesse Burns. Minio with patience, no one's going at him. He'll just rifle one around the boards. Burns again towards the net, and it popped up into the glove of Dillner. Eric Dillner last year was splitting some time, but towards the back end of the season and then into playoffs and nationals, it was his net. As he was in goal throughout the conference playoff run as well as the national championship run. D'Andrea cross blue, but they're off sides. Christopher D'Andrea, the freshman, standing 6'2, 172. Playing in his seventh game of the season. Looking for his first collegiate point. Trying to follow what Quinones just did to start the game. Mentioned before, Fairfield had a long layoff in between games. Two weeks ago, they played Farmingdale, and they haven't played since other than tonight. And the next weekend, they got three in a row. So it's a weird situation with the schedule as Rotan almost had a hooking penalty there, but we play on. Dylan Smith with the flip. DeAndre on the chase. Icing waved off as he beats it out. Got Chase McKenna on him as the rest of the Farmingdale group changes. Nice move by Kidd with the flip to Cummings. Christopher Cummings fires one right into the glove of Temkin. Both goaltenders this year for Farmingdale have played strong. This Farmingdale team has been plagued with inconsistencies, though defensive zone-wise. They're scoring 3.5 a game, but they're letting up almost the same at 3.25. And that goals per game was approaching four, but with being shut out last week, that took a big hit. To the point, Kravitz will send it right back to where it started, Signoretti to Hawkins, back towards the direction of Signoretti. Hawkins again. Around the boards, McGregor. This puck does not want to leave behind the goal line. It keeps going right back there. But as I say it, Fairfield will come out with it. Flipped over McGregor's head's a foot race. Now Temkin's going to have to play it. And just missing it there was Brendan Cohen. Could have picked up a turnover. McCann back the other way. Puck swiped away from his stick. As he'll come out the center, Brendan Burke will leave it with the help of Sharfstein. Sharfstein trying to muscle around. He'll draw a penalty on Jesse Burns. First power play of the night will go to Fairfield. Nice little pass there by Brendan Burke to send Sharfstein flying. And yep, he got the hand up in the stick, should I say, up in the hand, so that will be a hook. Last game, these two teams met up. Fairfield one for four on the man advantage. And they wound up letting up a crucial third period shorthanded goal to Tim Duffy. Of the first 
Fairfield look to get back on the board, not back on the board, just on the board in general. Being shut out as we speak, still very early, as that one's deflected in front by Sharfstein by the shot of Bra Brazel. Kid, Momro, bluffs, drags, fires off the glove of Temkin. Sharfstein, Momro, one timing shot, knocked down in front, rebound, and the second attempt is stuffed by Temkin. Jake Temkin has been strong in net, making not one, but two stops in front. I believe that was Sharfstein again. There's the first one, and there's the second with the pad. Off the draw, Farmingdale tries to push forward, can't get much further than the high slot. In front, Brazel could not slow it down as the puck will come out. Down the boards, Kidd, hassled by Rotan, kept in by Fairfield. Chase McKenna, he'll get it right back center point. Goes to Momro, drags, bluffs, now he lets it go, and it goes over the bar. McKenna now, 15 left in the period. Momro, they've been looking for him. He fires for a third time. Friendly fire as that one hit Brazel. As that will do it most likely for the end of the period, as Dillner tried to keep the offense going, as the period comes to an end. So after one period, we'll go into the second with Fairfield still in the man advantage for 34 seconds, but they'll be down 2 nothing thanks to the goals by Devin Quinillas, his first goal as a Ram, and Tim Duffy picking up his seventh of the year. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, we return to the island, a 2 nothing lead at second period puck drop for Farmingdale.
Welcome back, everyone, to the Al Arbor Rink here at the Northwell Health Ice Center on Long Island, New York. You're watching live on the LI Sports Network. My name is Jordan DeLuciano. Moments away from second period puck drop. Farmingdale starts off on the penalty kill, put up 2-0 in the game. Take a look at your screens now, representing Suffolk County High School Hockey League. It's Smithtown Hop Hog freshman red team in attendance for their three coaches. Three on Farmingdale State College. Goaltender Joseph DeCanio and both forwards, John McCann and Ethan Bohm, all three head coaches for Spittown Hot Box freshman red team. So not only do they play for Farmingdale and their students at Farmingdale, they also got a lot on their plate. After being at the rink here and being at school at Farmingdale, they gotta be at the rink coaching the freshman hockey team. I believe that freshman team's off to a pretty nice start this year as well. They are five and one. As Smithtown has a very good hockey program. How do I know that? I played for the Smithtown hockey program. 2013 varsity champions. My last year playing. Pass in front to McCann, as I said it, it was a Spittown alumni and McCann right there, almost giving them a 3-0 lead as we're back to 5-on-5. Five five. Icing arm up, and we will get an icing. So Fairfield right out of the intermission, didn't have much time to work with, just over 30 seconds of power play time, nothing happening of it. For Fairfield, though, Outside of the two goals, it was it, nothing to be ashamed of in that first period. It was just the the weird goal that slipped through the legs of Dillner, and then that great shot by Duffy that beat him, which could have it, it could have possibly surprised Dillner. But other than that, it's Fairfield. Uh, Fairfield wasn't convincingly convincingly dominated in that period. Not, not even close. As Tempkin makes a stop there for a whistle, Tempkin had to make a couple good stops that period including one on the man advantage right before the end of the period. Sharpstein, or should I say, excuse me, Sharpstein deflected a shot. The first one was stopped, and the rebound was a sprawling pad save, both on Sharpstein. As the leading point producer on Fairfield was looking for his fourth of the year. Orico tangled up. With Brazel, it'll be Rotan all the way up. Duffy, nice move behind the back. Duffy looking for O'Donnell, could pull the trigger, and the backhand attempt goes behind, and Duffy going a little bit of a uh, lacrosse style there, trying to pop it over the net. I didn't know he played system of a down here, nice. You see Duffy trying to pop it up over, but it got stuck on the bottom of the net. Anybody watching keeps up with the hockey house. I believe there was a goal this past week, this current weekend that they posted. Might be the goal of the year. I don't remember what team it was. As that one bounces free, it's a loose puck for Fairfield, and it's stopped by Temkin. It was Brazel picking up the generous bounce, could not beat Temkin. And the size advantage uh, going in the favor of the 6-3 Brazel there. That one goes way out of play, so we'll get another faceoff. As Fairfield bringing in first-year players, I mentioned before Robert Sharfstein out of Chicago, Illinois, and Aiden Brazel out of Hingham, Massachusetts, hoping to replicate the production they got for a long time from two recent graduates, Captain Vincent Spaziante and Michael Pitticelli. And a couple new names on the back end with their captain on the back end last year, Mark Vaughn graduating. New names like Aiden Blake, Ryan Dolan, Chase McKenna. Just to name a few alongside Kevin McIntyre. So similar to Farmingdale, both these teams have a very fresh, new, young defensive group. 
Speak of one, it's Jesse Burns. Holds back and throws it deflected wide by Immel. Immel will scoop up his own rebound. Tries to find Minio. Minio to Brennan, just kept it onside, and he'll shovel it into the corner. I think that hit a stick on the bench. It did. So it will be a offensive zone draw for Farmingdale as both teams get a fresh five out there. They play some bangers here. First, uh, they played System of a Down, then they're playing Limp Biscuit. Don't really hear these two bands played at hockey games, but at Farmingdale, they got it right. They got the music genre down to a T. Boom, nice move around two red jerseys there as Quinones tried to play it on the bounce, fanned on the shot, helped out by Boom in the corner. Boom, coughed it up eventually and pushing the other way is Fairfield and a big hit by Quinones on Ronan Curry. It looked like Curry could have a step around him. And to Quinones' credit, that was inches away to being interfering, so he played the body at the right time and let up at the right time as well. Brandon Hughes around the cage. We'll send it right back to where he began. Imagine a cap ray will go around the boards to right where Hughes was before. And the puck will come out. On the chase will be Robert Sippos for Farmingdale. Sippos, big hit. He meets the tough end of that one as a tough angled shot knocked away by Temkin. Zippos again gets hammered right on the boards there. As both men collide, they might get both of them on a penalty, and I think they will. So it's going to be at least Christopher Cummings for Fairfield going to the box. Maybe Robert Sippos as well. So this was after the first big hit. Here's the second one where Sippos got sandwiched, and then here comes the penalty. Both men would not let go of each other. And then Cummings goes backwards, and then Sippos got hit again, this time by Ronan Curry. So this is going to be the first hit that Sippos took. He took three hits that shift. Right off screen. Yeah, big collision. Ronan Curry getting the better of that one. Pretty close to getting a penalty there, because his hands did come upward. But it will be four on four for two minutes as Cummings and Sippos will sit. Strong pass, met up by Chase McKenna. McKenna, shot knocked down, friendly fire by Malawepsi trying to scoop up on the far side. McCann, good resiliency on the boards. Helps out for Kravitz, McCann now. Both in the box right now for roughing. Just under a minute and a half left on 4v4. Around the cage, Brennan Cohen will come out near side. Now cuts to the middle. Cross ice pass. Finds a man. Rister goes over the blocker all the way around and out of the zone as Chase McKenna has to regroup for the Stags. Pass to no man's land. Wind up finding. The man in Zach Lee. Lee's wrister and it goes in. Zach Lee from way downtown. It's a 4v4 goal as the Stags cut the lead in half. Now let's see, did this go straight in from Lee or did it hit a stick in front? Might have been a deflection by Brennan Burke and by his celebration, I believe so. So Brendan Burke, after getting 11, uh, 12 goals last year and 27 points, it takes to his sixth game this year to get his first goal. And Farmingo, despite being up 2-0, have not done much to really clamp it down and really put an emphasis on this game and show why they're up 2-0. Four 
Part four about to end. We have 10 more seconds of it. So Fairfield gets back that one goal that slipped five hole on Dillner. Good pinch there by Rotan. As we are back to five on five with 14 left in the second. Signoretti's pass got pinballed around as Ryan Murray will scoop up. Back it to Signoretti, can't get much further than the blue. Signoretti now with a lot of help. It's a three on one, down on the Rico, and a face mask save by Dillner. Farmingdale had two in tight down low. Larico could have shot that or went to Murray, elected to shoot it. Couldn't get past the face mask of Dillner. But it's Fairfield the other way. Mamro with a stop and fire. Block it away by Temkin. Fairfield, good push here after almost coughing up the third. But Farmingdale now tries to counter miscommunication on the transfer. Nice move by Signoretti to get around a man. Signoretti. Around the cage, looks to the blue line, finds Brennan. Brennan, wrister off a leg. Around the cage it goes, it'll be Larico. Larico, fire, tough angled off the side of the net. Immel, Immel, pass in front, broken up by Leary. And it will pop free to McIntyre. And that will be an icing, unless Fairfield could beat this out, and they will not. That was a close one as a last chance effort by Robert Sharfstein. That arguably could have went towards Sharfstein. Fairfield bench was not happy with that. Fairfield this year with a new look. Usually you saw the red and black as their predominant colors their past few years, but now a little bit of a uh, change up, going with the red and white, looking similar to uh, Boston University's color scheme and jersey style. Sharfstein's stick snapped in half, so he will head off. As will be Larico. Larico, wrister off a leg. Not a great play if you're Larico there because now the stacks push the other way with McDonald. Good recovery there as the net comes off. All right, so Farmingdale cannot change as Brennan accidentally knocked that net off. So if you're Larico there, we, you get the idea, you know, just trying to rifle it towards the net from the blue line, hoping for the rebound to pop loose. But it wound up hitting a leg and almost caused an, a, a, a big opportunity the other direction. Marquis loses the draw to Immel. It'll be Brennan, the man who knocked the net off. Finds Jesse Burns. Burns tries to go up the near side. He'll regroup back to Brennan behind the net. Hard wrap, nice bounce. And pushing the other way could be a break for Immel. It's a foot race. Good recovery by Kidd as he goes flying into the boards, but he's back on his feet. Duffy backhand shot, and it's snagged by Dillner. Rapid fire succession there for Farmingdale as Duffy oh so close for a second of the night. Dillner, after shaking off the cobwebs, has Stood up to the challenge. There's two right away. Two goals for two shots he let up. Has not let up one since and has looked strong in the process. So solid goaltender battle so far between Dillner and Temkin. McGregor, Minio, they'll switch off. Minio Rister from a high area wraps around for Bridgewood. Bridgewood throws a man down in marquee. Icing arm up. And we will get an icing. Second time on an icing call, Fairfield was right there to try to negate it. For all those watching at home on the LI Sports Network, if you want to keep track of all stats throughout the game, be sure to download the AAU College Hockey app as a pass in front. Minio gets stuffed, but the net came off its moorings. In the middle of my ad read, Farmingdale almost makes it 3-1 as Minio shakes his head. Right off the draw, and then Bridgewood just chipping it by, and Minio all alone in front. Nice play by Bridgewood to get it to him. But I don't know, even if that didn't get stopped by Dillner and it got past him, I don't know if it would have counted, because Bridgewood was the one that knocked the net off. So I don't know if that would have counted. 
But <laughs> what I was saying before, you want to keep up with all stats throughout the game or what's going on in AAU College Hockey, make sure to download the AAU College Hockey app. You get all live stats, standings, and leaderboards throughout all of AAU Divisions 1 through 3 and the women's division as well. Signoretti, nice touch pass. McCann holds, couldn't get the shot off. Magina Capre with a lunging stick. That might have hit a Farmingdale player on the bench. So the faceoff will come out of the zone. Desperation mode, I talked about at the top of the broadcast, it's desperation mode for both these teams. Farmingdale won two and one in the last four. A tough weekend last weekend. When Georgia came to town, they had a 3-3 tie and a disgusting 4 to nothing loss and a power play that definitely needed some work throughout practice. Fairfield, the record speaks for itself why they need a win. They are 0-5. They have had a very tough schedule to start, playing both the Empire and the Upstate New York Conference, but still not able to come out with a win despite three one-goal losses. Rotate gets slipped through. Might be numbers the other way for Fairfield. Rister blocked away by Tepkin as a stag crashes into the net in Christopher Cummings. Cummings, you'll see, now having a word with the ref in the corner. Trying to, I think he's making his case that he was taken down. He didn't just fall on his own and crash into that post. He was uh, tripped up. But back to what I was saying before, that power play, Farmingdale had many chances in the first meeting against Georgia, not just in the games, but specifically in overtime. They had two power plays in overtime that overlapped one another, and they got nothing, couldn't even get a shot on goal. And then the power play in the 4 nothing loss, again, they, uh, like I said, in, or in the first period, they let up three shorthanded breakaways on one power play alone, and four all together throughout the game. So it was something of need to address for head coach Joe Mazie and the Farmingdale crew during practice this week. Kept it at the blue line, knocked down. Nice hand eye by Malalepsi, but could not tee it off as he was surrounded by white jerseys. Around the boards will be Malalepsi again. Helping out is Cohen. Cohen finds Lee at the point. Shot found its way towards the net, but off the end boards from Magina Capre to scoop up. Zach Lee, the one who assisted on that deflection goal by Brendan Burke. Hawkins staying on his feet. Nice move around Lee's stick, but lost to his own devices. He'll try to go to McCann behind the net, could not find him. And out the other way comes Fairfield and Brendan Cohen. Joined down the middle by Sharfstein. Cohen. Stripped from behind, puck comes in the near side, thanks to Signoretti. Icing waved off as Duffy had the blue, or the red line, should I say, and he gets his own puck. Duffy waiting for some white jerseys off the bench. Finds Lorico. Tough angle shot all the way around the boards. It might be a nice carom for Brazel. Brazel, now he's by himself, bodied off the puck by Duffy. And it'll be O'Donnell, Larico. He looks towards Duffy's direction and elects to just go around the boards and find Duffy. Duffy looking for O'Donnell as it slipped through everybody. And Larico trying to keep it in and he will temporarily. O'Donnell has Duffy wide open, could not get him, goes around the boards. Duffy, cross size Quinones, he's got one and that one stopped with the chest and the glove of Dillner. Good rebound after a tough start for the goaltender out of Madison, Connecticut. We know what he's capable of. Talked about in the first period how he was the anchor back there through their Empire Conference playoff run and their national championship run. Kid 
High slot trying to find Momro. Goes underneath his stick. Brennan chops it free. Could be a two on one, and it is. It's O'Donnell with Rico. Finds him, wrister, and he scores. Michael Larico, his fourth of the year, and it's 3-1 Farmingdale. Jason Brennan will get a secondary assist on that, and he's the full reason why that play happens. Chipping it around a defender, springs O'Donnell, and the wrister by Larico finds the back of the net. So that all-important next goal, Fairfield one away from tying it. It goes to Farmingdale to open up their two-goal lead again. Bridgewood had Minio flying up the near side. Could not get him on the bank pass. It's Aiden Blake blocking away by Temkin. Rico out of Hillsboro, New Jersey. Gets Farmingdale back on the board and Bridgewood oh so close to getting their fourth of the game. Fairfield, quick two on one back the other way. Marquis is stopped by Temkin and he holds on. Farmingdale caught on a change and a bounce that goes the way of the Stags. It was a quick two on one, but almost effective. As Cummings looking to go five hole, but Tempkin able to clamp down. Dylan Smith cross blue, his lone goal this year was a shorthander against Marist. Or excuse me, Brandon Hughes, my apologies. It was Brandon Hughes. Cross ice pass, finds a breakaway in Mandato, but he's stripped from behind by Kravitz. Good recovery for the defenseman out of Smithtown, New York. DeAndreas pass broken up, stripped from behind as Kravitz tries to clear now to Bohm. And it was coughed up and regrouping will be Fairfield with Magina Capre. Kravitz, boom, boom with a lot of space and he'll take it. Boom, look at him four in front. The man we were talking about before in Brandon Hughes. Boom, fishes it free. Meets a big hit from behind. It was clean though, and Bohm is slow to get up as that one's wristered wide. They'll blow the whistle dead as Christopher Cummings got all of that body, and that's not the first time we've seen Cummings throwing the body this period. And this is a clean hit. He's right up against the boards. Bohm just now getting to his feet. He'll skate off after being a little shaken up there. Cummings was the one that got tangled up with Sippos earlier on in the second in Farmingdale's end, right behind the net. Now the shift that Sippos took, not one, not two, but three hits, all in rapid fire. McCann could have had a two-on-one with Signoretti, but he tripped up, leaving Brendan Burke time to get, uh, get back in the play. Burke tries to exit, turns it over. McCann, Signoretti by himself, trying to pull it back through his legs, could not. And a penalty coming up against Hawkins of Farmingdale. Dillner to the bench for the extra attacker. Kidd turns, finds a man, trying to go back to Kidd, way too far on the pass. Signoretti touches up, and it'll be another man advantage for the Stags. So just as the Rams had a chance here, you can see he's trying to go pull it on the toe end of his stick and probably pull it through his legs. He couldn't slow it down, and then here's Hawkins on the trip.
Fairfield's unsuccessful so far on their power plays tonight, but they were successful on one special teams, which was the four on four deflection goal by Brennan Burke. Momro, McKenna, back to Momro. Momro will drag Rister. He did that all the first period, and they're going to keep trying to find him at the top of that circle. McKenna, Momro again with room, drags, fires, blocking away by Temkin, and Farmingdale's got to start to realize he is faking that shot every time, dragging into the middle and letting it go, and it's working every time. So Farmingdale's got to be aware that Momro has been looking to fake that initial shot and drag to the middle, and every time he has, it's worked. Nice move by Sharfstein to gain the zone. Sharfstein thrown to the boards by Brennan and sent down by Brennan. <laughs> 54 left on the man advantage, almost 350 left in the second. That'll be Brennan Cullen. Around the world goes the puck. Banaji to Capra will send it right back to where it started behind for Burke. Burke behind the cage, trying to get away from Burns. We got a whistle here. I believe the net is off. It is. Faceoff will stay in Farmingdale ice. Three thirty-eight left in the period. Thirty-eight left on the Hawkins tripping penalty. Fairfield will have to try to regroup it now. With 20 on the dot left, play clock and penalty clock separated by 15 seconds. Or not 15 se yeah, 15 seconds. Nice stick work by Burke, could not keep it down for long, as many will come up. Joining the push now is Larico, couldn't find him. Five on five we go, as Fairfield counters up ice with Zach Lee. Lee for Burke, Burke touch pass, hit off a skate, and it'll be Brendan Cohen. Cohen. His pass was disrupted. It was sent all the way down. Hawkins fresh out of the box will scoop up, trying to find Kravitz. Kravitz down the wall to Hawkins, popped in the air, bouncing free, and kept it again by Kravitz. Kravitz will rest her one off a glove. Into the corner, Signoretti. Signoretti cross ice into the feet of Burke. Burke will find a man in Marquee, and out come the Stags, and a quick turnover, trying to push forward now free is Cohen, but right back to the Rams it goes as we slow things down. Signoretti get past the diving mag, trying to drag around now. Marquis scoops up in the neutral zone with Kravitz in front of him. Simple six save there by Temkin. McCann, Signoretti. Signoretti drag shot, deflected, popped in the air, and out of play. 149 left in the second, still 3-1 for Farmingdale. Back to their third goal of the game by Michael Larico, his fourth of the year. It'll be Ada McDonald. Couldn't get past the first line of defense. Duffy off the boards as he couldn't get past the defense of Fairfield. Now Sippos will wrap it around, back towards Duffy's direction. Now they'll just chop it up, stick it on that far side. Farmingdale with the lone game this weekend tonight against Fairfield. They will be home next weekend for two games against Binghamton, their first matchups of the season against the Upstate New York Conference, which has been very strong this year, similar to last year. Friday night and Saturday night against Binghamton, and Minio loose puck. Dillner's got to meet him, and Dillner chops it away. 
Bridgewood out from the corner, took a spill on his own there, no trip. That was all Bridgewood taking a spill. As William Kidd the other way, shot gets blocked by Murray as we're under a minute left in the second. Bridgewood trying to power his way into the backhand. Pansy Minio trying to stuff it again. Dillner kept that left leg down. We do have a penalty on the play. It will be against Fairfield for a slash. Let's see where they got the slash. Probably right there, yep. It'll be Christopher Cummings. There's the second pad by Dillner to really just anchor down that left leg on that near side post. So the power play for Farmingdale, first one of the game. Let's see if any changes happen after a really tough power play last weekend against Georgia. That really not much of anything was going their way. Couldn't gain the zone, passes were not good. Passes kept getting broken up and sent right back down. Defense kept getting picked apart on breakaways. Kind of a little too careless on the back end watching that guy coming out of the zone. As Farmingdale right now has five forwards out there for the power play. McCann, Bohm, Signoretti with Minio and Hawkins at the back. It'll be Minio, fires one, gloved by Dillner. Thirty-five left in the second. So barring a goal, Farmingdale's power play will carry into the third, just like Fairfield's did at the end of the first. Temkin will help out his group in front of him. It'll be Minio to Hawkins. Minio, puck gets tangled up, Fairfield the other way. And they are offside, so they have to touch up, can't go much further. Farmingdale's got to move if they want to strike late. Seven left in the period. Boom, nice move. Puck could not get past Maggi to Capre, and that will do it for the second. Farmingdale will take a minute and 17 on the man advantage into the final frame where they will start it. A three to one lead over Fairfield. It was two nothing, but a deflection goal by Brendan Burke, four on four, made it two one, but then a two on one goal assisted by Sean O'Donnell and Jason Brennan. Michael Larico got his fourth of the year to make it 3-1. I'm gonna step aside when we come back. Third period puck drop, Farmingdale up 3-1 over Fairfield.
Welcome back everyone to the Al Arbor Rink here at the Northwell Health Ice Center on Long Island, New York. My name is Jordan DeLuciano. We got one more period left, 20 more minutes. Farmingdale will open the final frame a minute and 17 on the man advantage where they carry in their three to one lead. Devin Quinones got this game started with his first collegiate goal, followed up by Tim Duffy, as Farmingdale went two for two on their first two shots. In the second period, a deflection goal by Brendan Burke cut the lead in half, but then Michael Larico on a two-on-one made it three to one, and that's where we currently stand. As Farmingdale will start it up with their second unit right now, as they ended it with their top Unit and five forwards on that power play. This time they have Jason Brennan back there, the defenseman. That one hit the ref, the boards, and out of play. Power plays to start a period always aren't the best thing. You know, maybe you're thinking, okay, they're, you're fresh coming out of the period. You got a fresh sheet of ice. Sometimes that fresh sheet of ice can work against you to start a period on the power play because sometimes you might just plan to do a normal close range pass and because the ice is so slick and sleek and fresh, that puck will just sail on you and it'll go a lot faster and quicker off the stick than you plan. And Duffy's stick just got caught in the boards and it gives Fairfield a free exit. That stick is broke, so Duffy will head to the bench and grab a new stick. Twenty-five off to the man advantage. Bad pass by Brennan as Aiden Blake, the defender, picked it off. So the power play that struggled all last weekend against Georgia continues again as Aiden Blake continues to get the better of Brennan. Mariko shot wristered off a stick and into the netting. Aiden Blake. 5'8 out of Pembroke, Massachusetts. First year here at Farming at Farmingdale, should I say Fairfield. Strong penalty killing there. Taking on the much bigger Jason Brennan. 5'8 going up against 6'5. McCann pushes forward. Signoretti chops at it. We'll pick it up, go behind the net as the power play will come to an end. It'll be the aforementioned Aiden Blake. We'll flip it in behind Temkin. Signoretti, under the stick of McCann, comes out to center, where Chase McKenna goes D to D. Farmingdale trying to scoop it back up in front of their own bench. Got to be careful there. As it'll be Hawkins by himself, meets a hit from McKenna as he chips it in. Top line for Farmingdale, not on the score sheet yet, but much better showing in this game so far compared to their last weekend against Georgia. Could say the same for the whole team, actually. Good keep by Roten. Didn't keep it in the zone, but kept it within reach because if that was able to get pushed through, I believe that was Liam Kaplis. Could add a two-on-one the other way. Turn over behind the net, pops free, kick save on the shot by Sharfstein. To the net again, deflected, bounces into the corner and away from Brazel. Momro takes a whack from Immel. It'll be Leary now at the blue line. Rister pinballs down to the ground as Duffy, or should I say Bridgewood, disposed of Leary at the blue line. Flipped up to Minio as Immel to the net looks for him, but it's just out of his reach. And now maybe a three on one. Bridgewood trying to get back. It's Brazel. Rister is blocked by Kravitz. We have a penalty on the play. Let's see who they got here. But tip to cap to Kravitz there and Bridgewood on the back check. There's one and here's Kravitz getting in front of that shot. Still no one going to the box right now. I think it's going to be Bridgewood for roughing, though, and it will be. So when Bridgewood caught up to Connor Momro on the back check, he spent a little bit too much time with Momro, which led to the roughing. 
Farmingdale in their meeting last time against Fairfield took six penalties, and they took seven last game against Georgia. Hawkins, shorthanded, beats everyone to it, and that's casually snubbed away by Dillner. McCann trying to swipe at it. He's the one that comes up with it, and a great reverse hit by the captain, John McCann. Fairfield all out of whack here to start their power play. 40 seconds in, nothing happening. Brennan Burke, cross blue. Finds a man in Cohen. Blocked away by Temkin. Chopped to the blue line, kept by Zach Lee. They'll set it up, and that one almost went out, but it stays in. Lee, around the world he goes. Behind the net. Tough angled shot is held by Temkin. Their last meeting, Fairfield only one for four on the power play. Moments away from going, not a moment, should I say another minute from being 0 for 4 on the night. As Immel will take that redirect and send it right back down for Dillner to play behind the net as Rotan hobbles off the ice. I believe Rotan was the one that blocked that shot, so he'll get a check on by the team trainer for Farmingdale as he was the one that blocked that shot by, uh, I believe it was maybe Lee from the blue line. Or excuse me, it was McKenna. Rotan quickly off the bench and now back on the bench, so he should be good to go, as it'll be Chase McKenna. With 15 left of the man advantage. Around the boards it goes for Brazel. Brazel leaves at the blue line for Momro. McKenna finds a man on the far side. William Kidd can't get much further than the stick of Bridgewood, and now DeAndre all over it and takes a spill. Momro, puck batted down by Hughes. Bowman will scoop up as we go back to five on five. So Formidale, 100% four for four on the kill tonight. Goal scoring for Fairfield this year, their 0-5 record. They have had over three goals in all the games so far, except for one. Penalty on the play, it's gonna be against Fairfield. Temkin to the bench, doesn't matter. It'll be touched up by the Stags, and it'll be a five on four for the Rams. But as I was saying, Fairfield 0-5 on the year. Every game except for one this year, they have three or more goals. But that one game was a 6-0 shutout. They lost to Quinnipiac. And they're going to get Momro there for the hit on the boards to, on Riley McGregor. Varmanil will go back to the power play, and there is a big monkey sitting on the power play's back right now. As they'll send out five forwards again. Bad pass by Hawkins there up the middle. Minio charging up to keep it at the red line. McCann, another reverse hit, and it'll be Minio and linking up with Signoretti. Signoretti back to a pass as McCann got way too deep there to get one on goal. Minio, nice keep at the blue line, but it got behind him. Could be shorthanded the other way for Cummings. Cummings has Ronan Curry in front. Cummings turnaround pass, but nobody home. And here's the, they're, they're, this power play for Farmingdale, it's too casual, too laid back, and that, that way to go about it leads to bad passes like the one we just saw before, and the one we've seen already in this power play currently. They have to be more decisive and direct with their passes. As McCann will play behind with 50 left on the man advantage, Signoretti, Minio plays catch. Signoretti cross ice. Hawkins had to go reach for it. 
Many a wrister on goal is held by Dillner. After almost a minute and a half, they'll switch up the power play unit. As now Farmingdale, after having four, five forwards out there, will go with three forwards and two defensemen as they'll try to get Brennan in front of the net for a screen with Riley McGregor back there for the Rams. And it'll be McGregor now. McGregor trying to drag and shoot, stripped by Marquis, but able to stick with it. Marquis hounding right now on the penalty kill. Bridgewood still trying to get around Marquis. Mariko has the game's recent goal. Brennan rebound, and they score! A power play goal for Farmingdale. A much needed power play goal, and it's 4-1. McGregor and Larico will get the assist. And twice against Fairfield this year, Jason Brennan in the same spot he scored in the first meeting gets another one tonight. And it's the five hole that dooms Dillner again. Just like that first goal. That just slid between the wickets. This time it was the second chance chop by Brennan. Larico wrists her towards the net. O'Donnell couldn't get to it. But Farmingdale stays with it. Duffy. Off the boards. At the blue line, puck skipped away from him, and it's a two-on-one the other way for the Stags. Trying to get it back, it's McDonald Rister, sticked up in the air by Temkin. Rico has Duffy, trying to get it to him. Duffy way off sides, as Farmingdale has to touch up. as Brennan will pick up his second point of the night, as will Larico. Backhanded pass in front, nobody home there. Kept in now by McKenna. One-timer by Kidd, changed direction and went wide. Brennan Burke from the blue line, sticked again away by Temkin. Murray in the corner, all he could do is chip it to the near side boards. Fairfield not able to keep it for long as Duffy will bank it in, head off on a change as that third, or should I say second line for Farmingdale was stuck out there for a while. William Kidd, end to end, hit off the skate of McGregor, icing arm up, will this roll all the way down? It will. Riley McGregor will pick up his third point of the year on his second assist. As Farmingdale gets that much needed monkey off their back in terms of the power play. Many chances in their first game last weekend against Georgia to win it in overtime on the man advantage. Many chances last weekend against Georgia on the man advantage to get back in the game in their 4 nothing loss. And nothing was happening for Farmingdale as that was fought off by Temkin. And now for Farmingdale, you want to keep this at a safe distance in terms of the gap of the score. Because they have had a trend as, as of recent, both against Quinnipiac, as we have an offsides here. And their win at home against Quinnipiac, it was 6-3, but Quinnipiac wouldn't go away. They put in two third period goals. And then when Farmingdale went to Connecticut against Quinnipiac, they coughed up a 4-1 third period lead and wound up losing in overtime. So for them, with 10.06 left in the game, clamp it down and don't let Fairfield back on the board as, as I say it, they come back in the zone. Lee, nice move to get some space in the blue line. Puck never got through the bodies. It's a three on two, maybe four if Kravitz can make it. They find Signoretti on the wrister, stopped by Dillner, and he gets the whistle. 
That pass could have been either Kravitz or Signoretti, and it wound up going to Signoretti and almost snuck five hole. Good entry by the Farmingdale top line there. As usually we see there, the goaltender will drop down the butterfly to stop that one, but Dillner elected to stay up. So they announce Riley McGregor's assist as they pick that one up late. So as I said, in the moment, it will be Jason Brennan on the power play from Michael Larico and Riley McGregor. Nice bounce, Signoretti trying to get some separation from Lee. Good back check by Lee, disrupts the backhand chance. McCann to the blue line. Jesse Burns tried to find Hawkins, didn't get all of that pass. As Brennan will chop it away from the stick, a brazel. Puck bounces all the way up and into the Farmingdale bench. When these two teams met, it was Fairfield up 3-1, and they wind up losing 5-4. Farmingdale came into this period up 3-1 and added a little bit more cushion for insurance as they sit 4-1 right now. Big body on the boards there. As it's Bridgewood to come out with it. Dylan Bridgewood rips one as it pinballed off some feet. Brennan, blue line, looking for a deflection in Immel. Block it away by Dillner. Immel, down low, Minio tough angled. Pad save again by Dillner. Minio sticking with it. Coming out to the far side, going for Jesse Burns, able to keep it in, deflected down by Immel, as is a stag down at center ice right now, as they'll blow the play dead. Luca Mandato collided with Jesse Burns at the blue line. They, he might have taken a stick up high on Burns' follow through, potentially because he's holding his neck right now, his neck area, so he may have taken a stick up high. Murray stretching the ice there, links up with Bohm. Bohm, wrister, gloved and held by Dillner. Farmingdale will be back in action at home November 3rd and 4th this upcoming weekend, 9 o'clock Friday night against Binghamton, and then they'll run it back against the Bearcats Saturday night at 7. You can catch both those games live here on the LI Sports Network. And then after that, it's a long road ahead for Farmingdale. Is that to those two home games? They'll follow it up with one, two, three, four, five straight on the road, spanning from November 12th to December 1st. They got Ramapo, University at Buffalo, Niagara, Bonaventure, and then Fairfield to wrap up the road trip. And then Farmingdale will come back home to play Cortland December 8th and 9th. Rister kicked away by Tempkin, flipped up in the air by Hughes. DeAndrea might have a step on this and he'll beat everyone. Icing was waved off because it hit the glove of McKenna anyway. Backhand off the side of the cage. Hughes gets the pinball there and throws it wide. Kept it at the blue line. Quinones now throws it on goal and it's covered up by Dillner. The other thing, Farmingdale, not only do they want to keep this cushion safe right now at a three goal lead, I mentioned at the top of the broadcast, their last five games, they've allowed three or more goals in all of them. So that's something that they want to get broken. That's another monkey they want off their back. That's another streak they want to end is cut those goals against down as that goal differential is creeping oh so close to being even on the year. That one just missed Tempkin, just missed the net, and it will be an icing. 
6.57 left in this one. All Farmingdale as we speak as they're up 4-1 against Empire Conference rival Fairfield. And Fairfield, after such a great year last year, 19-8-2, the eighth-ranked team, runners-up in the Empire Conference Finals, runners-up in the AAU National Championship game, losing to Binghamton. We got a whistle here. We, I think we're getting a penalty against Farmingdale. Looks like O'Donnell. Yeah, looks like O'Donnell. O'Donnell, yeah, that's a dangerous play by O'Donnell there. Coming way up high on that cross check. And perhaps before the cross check, he might have caught him down low with the stick, and that could be spearing. So let's see what the scoreboard tells us. It just could be two minutes. So he could have got spearing. He could have got cross-checking there. So a dangerous play and undisciplined so by O'Donnell there. And a power play goal makes this game a lot more interesting. Got to keep your head there if you're O'Donnell. It'll be Cullen, cross ice. The assistant captain, Maggi Capre will play it off the bounce. And Kravitz again might have blocked another one. Zach Lee could not keep that one in. Kravitz, a guy, he's not going to wow you with being the offensive defenseman type. Like I mentioned in the first period, Fairfield's William Kidd, but he's going to lock it down. He's going to be sound defensively. We saw that key block on the shot of Aiden Brazel on that two-on-one. Everyone's chopping at this puck. Brendan Burke comes out with it and will go to Cullen at the point. Cullen. Maggi Capre. Zach Lee. Lee. Cullen. Cross ice again towards Maggi Capre. It'll be Lee again. Zach Lee will go around the net. That long reach of Brennan gets in the way. Let's see if Burns can get it down, and he will. Rico putting the pressure shorthanded with Minio lurking behind, and it's the one Minio trying to catch up on the back check as Fairfield will go off sides with 5.05 left in the game and nine seconds left on the man advantage. Farmingdale looking to go five for five on the penalty kill tonight. Minio off the draw will send it towards Dillner. He'll knock it aside and Farmingdale will go five for five as of now on the penalty kill. Right off the bench on the intercept. Signoretti kicked away by Dillner. So this top line, much better showing. Gotta like what you see from the Signoretti, Hawkins, McCann group. Not on the scoreboard, but it's a small step in the right direction. And they're gonna need that top line with this road trip we spoke about before. As it could be a two on one now, and it will be. Signoretti would boom. Signoretti got all tangled up with Chase McKenna in front of him. Good defense by the defenseman out of Hingham, Massachusetts. William Kidd dances free, and a chest stop by Temkin. That one misses the glove of Dillner. Dillner misplayed that one. If it was anywhere closer to the net, it could have went behind him. It could have been another disaster for Eric Dillner. Farmingdale Hockey News, not with the D1 team specifically, but the D2 team off to a great start this year. Uh, the first AAU Players of the Month were announced, and the Player of the Month for Division II in the AAU was Brandon Dixon for Farmingdale State College D2 program. Not only is Brandon Dixon leading Division II in goals and points, he's also leading the entire AAU. So you take it to women's, you take in the D1, take it to D2, and take in D3. He leads everything. That should be a trip, and it will be. Farmingdale will go back to the power play.
Guys, let's see which stag was this. It might be Ronan Curry. Well, it's Curry in the corner. And yep, it's Curry right there. Farmingdale was able to get off the schneid with the power play goal with Jason Brennan. But now to try to get this top unit going, which includes the top forward line, it would be a good way to end this game and go on the road if they can get one with this top power play unit. We have a high stick on the puck as Bohm takes down a man in front and Cummings. So the whistle was for a high stick on the puck. So no penalty there. As I believe this faceoff will come out of the zone as Farmingdale's having some words with Cummings. Signoretti wasn't lined up for the faceoff and it wound up working out as the puck came right to him. McCann head over heels behind the net as it's poked free to Minio. Minio trying to get around Zach Lee. Minio trying to stuff it now on the near side. It's stuck on the back of the net and it kicks loose again to Minio. Signoretti. Hawkins. Cross ice Minio. Tries to go back in front to Boom, and it'll be Hawkins again. Center point, Signoretti. Minio, wrister deflected. Where is it? It's loose from McCann, and a good recovery stop by Dillner is eventually sent all the way down. Signoretti dances free from Liam Kaplis. Trying to get around Marquis now and get around William Kidd. He's three for three. Signoretti trying to finish it off and he can't as it was blocked away by Dillner. Signoretti again, second chance, is stuffed again by Dillner. So a great shift there for Luciano Signoretti. Just could not finish it off. A solid job by Dillner holding that near side as Signoretti was trying to get his first goal in the last three games. Duffy slows that one down so they don't have to go all the way back for it, but they'll, they'll regroup in their own zone regardless. Under 30 left on the man advantage. A minute and 40 left in the game. Farmingdale, if they don't score here, it's, they'll, they'll take it as long as they're chewing off clock to try to get to those final zeros. McGregor leaves to Larico. Larico to Brennan. Brennan will steer it in off a body of Bridgewood. Does not get much further than the blue line. Out of the box comes Ronan Curry, back to five on five we go as we approach the final minute of the game. Rico Bridgewood, got a makeshift line right now because it's the second power play unit still out there. Rister on goal as McGregor had that blocker side open, but if it wasn't for a block by Jace McKenna, it would have went in and there's a glove stop by Dillner. Duffy, with a lot of room there, could not beat the glove of Dillner, unlike his first goal of the game, which was the second for Farmingdale, where he was surrounded, and despite that, beat Dillner on the glove. Off the draw, trying to push free is DeAndrea. And we banked off the glass over a stick, icing waved off. And then icing called, so that was odd. The linesman waved off icing, I think, then looked to the other linesman, and the other linesman said, no, nah, that's gonna be an icing. Fairfield after this one, November 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Three games in a row in the upcoming weekend. They kick it off at home against Ramapo. They got a home and home against the Roadrunners, and then they finish it up against Fordham. Behind the net, in front, and Temkin stands tall. Robbing Brendan Burke of his second of the night.
pass in front, and another stop by Temkin in the dying seconds of the night. Jake Temkin back-to-back -back saves to keep Fairfield at one on the board, and that's how it's gonna end as clock runs out. Farmingdale gets off their losing streak and win this one four to one. A much needed win for the Rams. Coming into this one, one, two, and one in their last four. That lone win was against Fairfield. So in a get right game, they got right. They got the power play goal, they got the offense, and they did something they haven't been able to do in their last five games, is limit a team to under three goals. A great showing by Jabe Temkin as they knock off their Empire Conference rival Fairfield. The Stags will drop to 0-6 on the year as the Rams improve to 5-3-1. Next time we'll join you this upcoming weekend. Back-to-back -back night games Friday and Saturday for Farmingdale at home against Binghamton University. For the final time, signing off from the Al Arbor Rink here at the Northwell Health Ice Center on Long Island, New York. My name is Jordan DeLuciano. Once again, your final, Farmingdale State 4, Fairfield University 1. Good night, everyone, and thanks for joining us.